applications of supply and demand. So applications of our supply and demand function. So the first example here is a flea market all right, where a farmer is going to sell strawberries. He's noticed that when he sells his strawberries for $2.50 a quart, he'll sell around 80 quarts. If he reduces his price by 20 cents, he'll then sell 90 quarts. How many quarts will be sold when the price is at $2 a quart? All right, so I need to find either a supply or a demand equation to answer the question. I need to be able to find how many quarts, that's the quantity, will he sell when the price is at $2? Right? And so I need an equation to do that. So I need to find either a supply or demand equation. Actually, the process is the same, so you can't go wrong here. But it is always important to know what you're looking for. He's selling 80 quarts. He's selling 90 quarts, which means he may have more than that on supply. But that's how much the buyers are buying, right? For $2.50, people are buying 80 quarts. When I drop it by 20 cents to $2.30, people are buying 90 quarts at this flea market. And so this is a demand case. It's the same equation, though. It's quantity equals slope times price plus my y-intercept, where, again, I'm just going to put a little d. That represents the demand. So in order to answer the question, even if you had gotten the supply and demand part incorrect, it's the same equation. It's just a point of view. Right? Quantity represents the demand. Right? When it's a supply, quantity represents the amount of strawberries the farmer brought to the market, which is actually our next question. All right, so slope is still found the same way. It's the change in quantity, which is my quartz, over the change in price for my quartz. All right, which they actually told me the change in price. I don't even have to find that. They told me they dropped the price by 20 cents, so it's a negative 0.2. Right? I know the price went down by 20 cents. When the price went down by 20 cents, how did that change my quantity? Well, I was selling 80. I'm now selling 90 at the lower price. So it means the change in quantity sold went up by 10. And so my change in number of quarts, 10, right? 90 minus 80 is 10. And so simplify that. My slope comes out negative 50. And it should, that should then tell you that it was the demand case, right? If you would gotten it wrong at the beginning, at this point it should know, well, when slope is negative, it's the demand case. Right. Well, I now have slope. I then need my y-intercept, which means I need to have a point. So keep, be careful here. Price, quantity. Price is the x part. Quantity is the y part. They gave me a price and quantity. They gave me a price of $2.50 paired with the quantity 80, 80 quarts. Plug them in and find your missing piece. And so just make sure you're care careful. 80 goes in for the quantity part. Negative 50 was my slope. $2.50 goes in for the price part. So it's really easy to flip those around. Students will often either flip around the slope. They'll do the slope upside down. Or they'll accidentally plug in the, the P and the Q wrong when they're finding the Y intersection. So just be very careful with these. All right, so 50 times 2.5 comes out negative to 125. And so 205 is my y-intercept, right. which again, it's all of this to get down to my quantity demanded equals the slope times price plus my y-intercept, which is not the question they're asking. I need that to answer my question. Right. The question was, how many quarts will be sold, so how many quarts will be demanded if they reduce the price to $2? So what will be the demand if the price is dropped to $2? And so I'm going to plug my $2 into this demand equation I just found. So the price gets dropped $2. I'll plug 2 in. How many quarts of strawberries will be sold, will be demanded? And so you take your 50 times 2 minus your 205, so that's 100 minus 205 comes out to 105. So they will sell 105 quarts of strawberries at $2. Right, 
and the answer again is 105. All right, that's the demand case. The next question is the same farmer's market, but then we're gonna do the supply. All right, and this one actually says the word supply, so it's a little easier to tell, but the slope should come out positive. And that's another tell that it's the supply case. All right, so it's the same flea market. The farmer is willing to bring 70 quarts. So again, the farmer has different flea markets he'll sell his product at. And so if this particular flea market has a price of at least a dollar, that's what the going price is for everybody who's bringing their, so yeah, a lot of different farmers will bring their, their quarts of strawberries. If the going price at this particular market is $1.85, he'll bring 70 quarts of strawberries. If the price is at $2.35, he'll bring more, right? Because the price is higher, he'll bring more to this market because they're selling at a higher price. And so he'll, he'll bring 100, 100 quarts when the price is raised to $2.35. How many quarts will the farmer be willing to bring if the price is at that $2 per quart? So it's the same question, but the different point of view. How many will he be willing to bring when the price is set at that mark? Now, and so we're looking for the supply, which is the same equation, quantity equals slope times price plus my wire set. It's just the different point of view. Quantity represents a different thing. In the demand, the quantity represents the item sold. In the supply, the quantity represents the items brought to be sold. But the setup is actually the same. Slope is found the same way. It's the change in quantity, which in this case is our quarts of strawberry, over the change in price. All right, so change in quantity would be 100 quarts to 70. Price with 100 was 235. Price for the 70.85. So change in quantity was 30. That change was brought by a change in price. Of 50, 50.5. All right, $2.35 minus $1.85 is 50 cents difference. All right, make sure I get the subtraction right. So 30 minus 0.5 is 60 and it does come out positive. That's another tell that it is my supply equation. All right, so I found my slope was 60, positive, and again, supply, it's always positive. I need to find my missing piece, my B, which means there should be a point. They actually give me two. You can pick either one. Just make sure you're careful. Mind your P's and Q's. And so the first point, they gave me a quantity of 70. All right, that's the Q part. Price was $1.85. All right, you could use the other point if you want to use the other point. And so again, I'm going to plug them in and find my y-intercept. So make sure you're careful. Quantity was 70, slope was 60, price was $1.85. All right, so our 70 equals whatever 60 times $1.85 is. 111, subtract the 111, and so negative 41 is my y-intercept. All right. Which again, just gets me to my supply. My supply equation was my quantity supplied equaled a slope of 60 times price minus a y-intercept of 41. Now I'm gonna use my supply equation. All right. How many quarts will the farmer supply, and will we bring to market, if the market price for, at this particular market, if the price for the quarter of strawberries is $2. So price is $2. Quantity. So I plug my price into that equation. So I take 60 times 2 minus 41 comes out 79. So he will supply 79 quarts. Which based on my previous answer, he should sell all of them. Right? If he, he brings 79 quarts to the market for the price of $2, the demand will actually be more than that. So there'll be people who didn't get strawberries that wanted strawberries. Right? The demand will be a slightly more than that at 105, but he only brings 79. So he should be able to sell all of his strawberries, and there will be people who leave the market sad because they won't be able to get their strawberries because they won't meet the demand. So the next question is, well, I want to make a perfect market. I want to bring as many strawberries to this market as is going to sell, and I want a price that makes everybody sort of happy. What price will the consumers buy exactly the amount the suppliers will bring? Well, that special place where supply and demand are the same is called the market equilibrium. Right? That's what we want to find. It's sort of the perfect market. Right? 
we want to find when supply equals demand. And so what's the market equilibrium is, is we will bring the right amount supply will equal the demand. So we want to find the price where that happens. What's the perfect price where the consumers will buy exactly the amount the suppliers are willing to bring? And well, that perfect place is called market equilibrium, where price is set up for quantity for supply will equal quantity for demanded. So going back to my strawberry example, my, my farmer's market, I want to find the perfect market for these strawberries. What is the price that I need to set for my quarts of strawberries that the supplier, the farmer, will bring the exact amount that will be demanded at that price? And so market equilibrium for our strawberries. And so what I do to figure that out is, well, I have to take my supply equation, set it equal to my demand equation. And so remember the supply equation was, my quantity supplied was 60 times price minus my 41. My quantity demanded was negative 50 times price plus 205. And so I take those two equations, set them equal to each other. So my supply equals my demand and then solve for price. And so I'm gonna, I don't like negative, so I'm gonna move my 50p to the other side. So I get 110 minus 41 equals 205, and then move the 41 over. And so 110 times price equals 246, and then divide by my 110. And again, it's, it's a price, so always round the penny. And so my, equilibrium price, I'm going to round correctly, so it comes out 2.23, and so I'm going to round up to 2.24 is my equilibrium price. Which only half the problem, all right, that's the price they need to sell their, their, their quarts of strawberries for. If they sell it at $2.24, the farmer will bring exactly the right amount of quartz to the market. He'll bring, and which we're gonna find next. And so we need to find the equilibrium quantity. All right, so what's the quantity at equilibrium? Well, you take your $2.40 and you can plug it into either one of those equations because they should be the same. This is the perfect price where supply is exactly the same as demand, and we're gonna round the whole quart, right? We want a whole quart of strawberries. And so you can plug it in either one of those equations. So you can pick the first equation or the second equation, it doesn't matter, so I'll pick the first. So 60 times 0.24 minus 41. All right, round to the quarts, right? So round correctly, and so round to the 93, whole number, 93 quarts. And so, the market equilibrium means if they set the price to $2.24, the farmer will bring 93 quarts of strawberries and the demand will be 93. So will our supply will meet our demand. So everybody's happy. The supplier's happy and the consumer's happy. We've met our demand and we supplied exactly the right amount in sort of a perfect market. Right, so let's do another example. So Gene makes stained glass lampshades. He sells 60 lampshades per month if the price is set at $80 per shade. He can sell 45 at a price of $100. He's willing to supply 20 at a price of $80 and 25 at a price of 100. And so this is a problem where, they, where the last example, I broke it down by parts. I did the all right, supply, then I did the demand, then I did the equilibrium. All right, this one's sort of putting it all in one problem. We're gonna find the supply, we're gonna find the demand, and then we're gonna get to the equilibrium. All right, so supply and demand first. And so we're gonna find our supply equation and then our demand equation. So the biggest thing is it's all given to you in the same problem. So I have to make sure I pick the, the right numbers. And so the supply is the easy one because it comes out and tells you. All right, so this last piece of information it's the supply information, that's my supply. And so, this, this, so I'm gonna ignore the, the beginning stuff. I'm only gonna use the supply information. All right, so my quantity supplied is my price times my slope plus my y-intercept. Slope is found by finding the change in supply quantity 
over the change in price. So make sure the price is actually the same. It's 180. It's the supply and demand that's different. I have to make sure I'm careful and I pick the change in supply when I'm finding the supply equation. And so my change in supply, well, at a price of $80, he's willing to supply 20, so 20 lampshades, minus the 25 when the price is at 100. Okay, and so the change in price is 80 minus 100. So 20 goes with 80, 25 goes with, and you can, you can flip that around, just make sure you're consistent. 80 goes with 20 lampshades supplied, 100 goes with the 25 lampshades supplied. And again, change in supply divided by change in price. And so my slope up top is a negative 5 over negative 20. And so the negatives cancel out. That reduces to 1 fourth or 0.25. I'm going to use the 0.25. All right, so there is my slope. My slope is 0.25. I need to find my y-intercept, which means I need to use one of my points to make sure you're careful. There are two of them. Just make sure you're careful with your P and Q. I'm going to use the first one, the 20. And the 80. 80 is the supply or is the price. So 80 is the price. So that goes in the P spot. 20 is the quantity supply. So make sure you're careful. It's really easy to flip those around. Uh, so make sure you're very, very careful when you plug those in. Alright, so I'm gonna go plug them in. So I'm gonna take my 80 price times, and I don't know why I wrote it like that slope times p. Not that it matters, it just, we could, if we write it the other way. Slope we found was our 0.25 and our items was 20. And then I set it and I did it backwards. Gosh darn it. Don't do that guys, right? It's really easy to do. Flip it around. Quantity is uh, 20, price is 80. So quantity is 20, 20 goes into quantity, price is 80. So again, it's really easy to mess that up. So make sure you're careful. And I did it backwards to make sure, again, that's probably the most common mistake students make that I just demonstrated. Okay, so I got 20, oh, so my B is zero and that's fine. We can have a zero for our y-intercept, so my supply, which I'm gonna hold on to it here, my supply equation, quantity supplied is my slope, 0.25 times price, and you don't really need the plus zero, so I'm actually gonna erase it. My y-intercept was zero. All right, so there's my supply equation. So step one, find the supply, now do the demand. All right, so demand. Same equation, just different point of view. And a different set of values. So my demand goes with the first. He can sell, right? Demand is what you're selling. So he's going to sell 60 lampshades at a price of 80. He can sell 45 light lampshades at a price of 100. Okay. So the first line goes with demand, right? The blue stuff goes with my demand. And I'm going to write it down here so I don't have to keep going scrolling up. So when our demand goes with a price of 80 goes with a demand of 60 and a price of 100 goes with a demand of 45. All right, so those are my points that I gave in my demand. All right, slope is my change in demand, change in demand. That's the quantity part over the change in price. And actually the price is the same as what we had before. It was 80 minus 100, so that's going to come out negative 20. It's the same price, but the quantity is different because it's the supply quantity. So 80 goes with 60. They can sell more at this lower price than they do at the higher price. So 60 minus 45 comes out 15, and so my slope comes out negative 3 fourths or negative 0.75. Plug one of those points in, doesn't matter which one you plug in, in order to find my missing piece. I'll plug the first one in again, be careful. 60 goes with the quantity, 80 goes with the price. So when I plug it in, it's 60 for quantity. My slope was negative 0.75 and my price was 80. And 
so 120 is my y-intercept and so my demand if I can squeeze it in here is my quantity demanded equals negative 0.75 times price plus 120 all right so there's my supply and there's my demand so my supply 0.25 times price my demand negative right because demand is always a negative slope negative 0.75 price plus 120 if you're going to read that that's my 120. all right supply and demand that's the hard part then the hard part is finding the supply and demand because you, you there's a lot of little things that can go wrong so again, there's just messing up the equation, messing up which goes with supply, which goes with demand, and flipping your price and quantity. It's really easy to do. Right, so once you have them, now we're going to find equilibrium. And I'm going to do both, both of them together. I'm going to find equilibrium price and then equilibrium quantity. I'm going to do them both down here. All right, so remember, equilibrium is when supply equals demand. All right, so my supply equation... 0.25 times price, so 0.25p equals my demand, negative 0.75p plus 120. Solve for pr price, so add 0.75p, so that comes out nice, it comes out 1. And so there's my price, $120. So my equilibrium price is 120 That's part B, so part B, my equilibrium price is $120 for that shape. All right, then C, what's the equilibrium quantity, right? How many lampshades? Well, that's quantity. So C is asking for the quantity at equilibrium. Well, in order to do that, I take my price and plug it into my one, one of my equation. Now, the supply equation is the easy one. That's probably the one I'll use. Supply was 0.25 times price. So plug that price in. So 0.25 times 120. So how many lampshades will they supply and sell at equilibrium well 120 times 0.25 comes out 30 30 lamps 30 lamp shades shades at equilibrium And there's the part, and the, what you have to be careful of is a lot of times um, on the quiz and the test that's what they'll ask for is the quantity and students will give price. Right? So just make sure, mind your P's and Q's. Remember what price is, remember what quantity is. Quantity is the items, price is the dollar amount. Right? And so again, be careful with those. So on your own, there's one you have to practice. Now the one you have to practice is a little easier. I gave you the supply and demand equation. You didn't have to find it. It's just practicing finding supply and demand, but make sure you know how to find these. Make sure you can do this problem and find your supply and demand equation. All right, we'll wrap that up there. And that finishes up 1.3.